Black History Month Poetry Slam looks a little different this year, as obviously our entire school year has. But that's exactly why it was so important to keep this tradition. Our kids deserve every opportunity to shine, pandemic or not. So we worked hard to move this into a virtual setting. Another change this year was the addition of the art contest component. This opened the door for even more students to feel comfortable sharing their voice with us. In total, we, we received 15 poetry submissions and 18 artwork submissions, our biggest turnout yet. So um, big round of applause, snaps, whatever it is that you do. Um, let's celebrate that because 15 poems in of itself is bigger than we've ever had as far as a turnout. But with this virtual world, I was really nervous about getting a lot of people involved. And I was just blown away by um, our students and their participation level and commitment to this tradition, um, which I hope all of you are as well. So each of these pieces of work were tasked with addressing this year's theme, which is Our Voice Matters, A Moment in History. So much has happened in the past year, and we were excited to hear how our students, um, their feelings on it, their thoughts, their voices on these events. So if we're looking here, I just want to make sure that everybody understands this is going to be our order of events. So obviously right now I'm welcoming you all. And again, thank you for joining us. Then we're going to take a moment to meet our judges this year. We always in um, invite outside guests from outside the Morris Jeff community to participate in our uh, annual poetry slam. Um, and then we're gonna play the video of our poetry performances. The video is about 20 minutes long. Uh, when that is done, we will have the awards and announce our poetry winners. We'll have a few closing thoughts. And then at the very end, I'm going to show our art show video. It was presented to the students yesterday during advisory. If you have not had a chance to see that, if you are just so blown away that you wanna watch it again, you are more than welcome to stick around and watch that at the very end. It'll be 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. So as far as our judges, um, our judges were emailed all of the videos this year. Typically they come into the school and um, participate in the moment. But with this virtual world, we had to submit videos, um, uh, submit poems through a video. So all of the vi uh, videos were emailed out to the judges along with a scoring card. They rated each performance and then returned their results to me um, in which we calculated everything, we averaged everything out, we got our winners, and we just wanna really state, we can't state enough how much we appreciate our judges taking the time um, to kind of go back and forth with that emailing and really still being uh, willing to participate in this unprecedented year. So who are our judges this year? First off, we have Mayor Latoya Cantrell, which is a huge honor. We're so excited that she participated. Um, due to the restrictions on our event this year, I really wanted to find a way to keep our Poetry Slam special. Enter Mayor Latoya Cantrell. One day I decided to take a shot in the dark and email her to see if she'd be willing to be a guest judge. To my surprise, I heard back from the mayor in just days and she was all too happy to participate. On May 7th, 2018, Mayor Cantrell became the first woman mayor of New Orleans. The three main focuses of Cantrell's term in office are public safety, infrastructure, and housing. And again, we are so honored to have her join us this year. Our next judge is Heather Gonzalez. It's our honor to have Ms. Heather Gonzalez join us for the second year in a row. Before the e event was even cleaned up last year, Ms. Gonzalez was offering to come back this year. A native New Orleanian, Heather is the founder and CEO of the event production company, Laissez Faire LLC, where she provides high quality marketing and event planning to a diverse suite of clients. We also have Atari Jenkins. Atari Jenkins is a local MC who goes by the, the, by the performance name Hostile to Godchild. Hostile was part of our inaugural poetry slam at Morris, Morris Jeff two years ago and was happy to return again this year. Mr. Jenkins was born and raised in Louisiana. 
From a very young age, he started using writing and freestyling as an outlet to prevent bullying. This led to a lifelong passion and spurred his spearheading the Dig Nation movement. Our last but not least judge is Eric June. Our fourth judge is here also returning for his second year. Eric June judged alongside Heather last year and immediately offered to return as well. Mr. June is a native New Orleanian and the owner of Mosaic Massage LLC. He started his education studying anatomy and physiology at Dillard, which led to a passion for massage therapy. Eric's company motto is, where massage is treated like a work of art. So again, a huge thank you goes out to our judges. Um, we could not do this without you. It's important to us um, for the kids to kind of see somebody that's not in their everyday world to, to participate. And for three of the four of you to be jo joining us for a second year, um, it, it shows to us how much this means to you as well. So thank you for that. If anybody's interested in reading more about our judges, their full bio is in this year's event program. Um, the program is available in a number of formats. If you have access to our school Google Calendar, I have uploaded it there. It will also be available on Morris Jeff's social media. It should be um, presented through our Pelican Press. And then if you did a search on Facebook, I had created a third annual Morris Jeff um, event space on Facebook, and I have it uploaded there as well. In the future, you can look for um, the art show that we'll be presenting, and then this video slam as well. So I do want to show you real quick the virtual version of our um, program. If you go to the link, you'll see you can just go through, and it's got all of our judges, full info in there, and then it does go through and you have every single student poem that you're going to hear today. And then on the back end is all of the artwork as well. So it has every single student piece, whether it be written or drawn or painted, whatever, in this uh, uh, platform for you to enjoy. That being said, it is showtime. So please sit back, relax, enjoy the show. I'm Leah Bannister, and this is my poem, It Was Till This Day. It was till this day that I reflected who we are, who we look like, who we represent. It was till this day that I reflected, has anything changed, or do we not know how to stand up for what's right and what we know is right? It was till this day that I reflected if I can trust policemen. Black History Month is all about learning more about Black culture, expressing black culture. I feel that people should start going back out and protesting. Something doesn't feel right, as if it just stopped. The lack of acceptance in this country is increasing. It was till this day that I felt free as I walked My apologies, guys. One moment, let me get this going again.
I'm Leah Bannister, and this is my poem, It Was Till This Day. It was till this day that I reflected who we are, who we look like, who we represent. It was till this day that I reflected, has anything changed, or do we not know how to stand up for what's right and what we know is right? It was till this day that I reflected if I can trust policemen. Black History Month is all about learning more about Black culture, expressing Black culture. I feel that people should start going back out and protesting. Something doesn't feel right, as if it just stopped. The lack of acceptance in this country is increasing. It was till this day that I felt free. As I walked down the empty, quiet streets, I think to myself that if there is no silence, there is violence. There is just a problem. A problem that hasn't been solved. America right now is like a bag of chips. One chip resembles diversity, uniqueness, unity. But as you get to the bottom, they're all crumbles. Our society is at the bottom. We are at the bottom. We need to rise our way back to the top, not just pile up over each other. It was till this day that I reflected We need to hold on to each other and rise up together as one. I love like the wind blowing on my face. I wonder why people stay quiet and don't raise their voices. I hear all of the animals speaking, raising their voices like thunderclaps. I see people fighting for their rights. I want you all to speak and to be loud, louder than a tiger. I am loud like the wind blowing on my face. I pretend to not stay quiet and speak. I feel happy that all of the animals are growling. I touch their fingerprints. I worry that you won't speak. I cry if I see you cry. I am loud like the wind blowing on my face. I understand that you are okay. I say don't stay quiet. I dream of everyone being happy. I try to make you speak. I hope you are okay. I am loud like the wind blowing on my face. I am a team player and I am competitive. I wonder if this talent will last. I hear a boom of the ball on the court. I see the goal in my sight and I want to make this my career. I am a team player and I am competitive. I pretend to be LeBron. I feel like I can make it when I see him on the TV. I touch a basketball and think about who I can become. I worry about not making it. I cry about Clutch Dream. I am a team player and I am competitive. Take five. Hi, my name is Logan, and this is my poetry slam submission. Yeah. The silence, the ones who they claim appear different to the face. The paychecks go up for the ones who fit in, like the palms with the tiny ways. But then they stay at the minimum for everyone who doesn't. The life and they will claim that time can change acts. But what happens when the clocks on the walls won't move? He was only like 17, but the police won't leave. Society failed them just like they used to, but they still claim that time like change. Broken, broken clocks, oh, will it ever stop? Ending. Yeah. Okay.
that's it. That's my thing. Hi, my name is Brene, and the title of my poem is My Voice Matters. I am intelligent and smart. I wonder about my future. I hear screaming and pain. I see crowds rioting and fighting. I want racism to come to a stop. I am intelligent and smart. I pretend the world is okay, but it's not. I feel sad and mad. I touch a beautiful, bright cloud. I'm worried I won't be able to live a racism-free life. I cry when I hear the violence happening. I am intelligent and smart. I understand the world might not always be peaceful. I say it will be okay. It will be okay. I dream that this can stop. I try hard not to think about it. I hope that one day the world can be better. I am intelligent. I am smart. I am helpful and loving. I wonder about school. I hear footsteps. I see city. I want to love my family. I am helpful and loving. I pretend to go on vacation. I feel happy and sad. I touch blankets and pillows. I wonder about my baby sister. I cry when I miss my grandparents. I am helpful and loving. I understand my dream. I say I like to go somewhere. I dream about Florida. I try to say good words. I hope to go on vacation. I am helpful and loving. Scared voices. Voices that are shut down. Voices that are scared to come out. Voices people are killed for. Loud voices. Voices that talk back. Voices that spread news. Voices people are killed for. Mad voices. Voices that yell. Voices that fight back. Voices people are killed for. Tired voices. Voices tired of the way we're treated. Voices tired of being shut down. Voices tired of having to use violence. Voices people are killed for. We all have voices, and we all just want to be heard. Dr. Martin Luther, dot, 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 by William Trevine Julian. I know how we can fix this messed up country, but I can't do it myself. I need you, you, and you. I know this poem is my voice matters, but really yours matters too. To fix this world, we must be kind. I know you're one person, but keep an open mind. We can't be one, we must combine. It's not white, black, or yellow, it's humankind. Don't be blind. We must open our eyes and see we're no different. And even if we are, we're still the equivalent. And I believe we'll see through this mess. And one day our world will be just like that man's dream. Yes, you know who I mean, and his name's King. Voices by Amelia K. Matthew. Reciting the words of Maya Angelou. Words mean more than what is said down on paper. It takes the human voice to infuse with deeper meaning. We cannot be mute. We must speak for the ones that speak. We must speak for the ones that spoke. Reciting the words of Coco Chanel. The most courageous act is still to think for yourself aloud. To be silent is to be complex. To amplify the melanin voice is the goal. To be that one voice when everyone is silent. Reciting the words of Angie Thomas. What is the point of having a voice if you're going to be silent in those moments you shouldn't be? You don't deserve a voice if you don't use it. Your life being to end when you become silent to things that matter. You may know your place, but I know mine. Now I will recite my own words. You have a voice. You have the obligation to use that voice to empower. You have to be a voice and not the echo because when you own your voice, you own your power. That's my definition of a voice. Voices by Amir K. Matthews.
Boom, bow, blam. That's all you're hitting. You see body shopping the floor. Next thing you know, the police come knocking on your door. They ask you, did you do it? Nah, man, I ain't screwed with it. The police ain't even trying to hear what you got to see. They're thinking, oh, he black, that means he got to pay. Next day, saying cop get shot. Dude be having in the house like hot. Police trying to blow up my spot. Three of my friends going to wind up getting got. It's just too crazy for me. It's way too much heat for me. You walk in my shoes for a day, you going to wind up trying to fail for me. And I am Amari Teron Lewis. My poem is Life as a Black Man. Hi, my name is Cassidy, and this is my Black History poem. They say Black people can't succeed. They say we are not intelligent. They take our kindness for weakness. They say we are too Black. They say Black people are not strong. I say Black magic is sometimes blue. They say we have to sit in the back of the bus. They say we don't deserve education. They say black history does not matter. I say black history does matter. And this is my black history poem. Hi guys. Sorry for the background noise. I'll try to make sure that I don't let this happen again. This is going to be the last time you hear background. And so this video is going to be about my poetry slam. 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 So I hope you guys enjoy. My poem is about how my house was leaking. It all started while playing in my brother's room. And it and we was in there playing, and suddenly we saw water coming from his closet, and that's when we realized that there's something leaking in there. So we packed it up, and it still was leaking. So we decided to move. We decided to move, and and don't go back to the house. Well, my fair house and make sure that that don't happen again. Thank you guys for watching. When did it all go wrong? By Talon Blunt. When did it all go wrong when black people had to work for no pay? When did it all go wrong when black people had to do whatever the white men say? When did it all go wrong when my people had to fight for their life every day? We watched their kids cook their food and clean their homes, but they treated us like dogs and only gave us a simple bone. To them, we were puppets. They pulled the strings and we moved, but we would get beaten for even having the smallest attitude. When did it all go wrong through the 17th and 18th century where my people were beaten because the master wasn't pleased? They had to cry, pray, and even beg on their knees. When did it all go wrong for my people to lose their hope, scared to speak up because they might get choked? When did it all go wrong? What good for black people? What good to criticize? What good to kill? What good to make black people suffer? What good does it make you feel? What good to look down because of color? What good to make black people feel bad? What good? Trying to prove a point that is pointless. God made us all equal. We are his children. We as his children need to be happy for him. We as his children should have love for one another. We as his children should respect one another as an equal. If you act like that, then you let the devil come into your heart. That is what the devil wants. Hate in our hearts. Look up or don't bother. Hey guys, my name is Cameron Bro, and I will be presenting my I Am Me poem. I Am Me. I am a black girl. My melanated skin is what they hate. My succession is what they disgrace. They hate to see a brown girl like me win. They love the skinny, relatable Caucasian girl. 
I am not the average American girl. I am the beautiful, black, smart girl and class they underestimate. I am me. My goals are not for them to judge or love. I am not for them to understand. I am not for them to spectate and touch like a zoo animal. I am a gorgeous black pearl. They are not who I admire and they are not who I expect to love and be accepted by. I am me. I am a black girl who is looked over and not seen as beautiful, but that is not my problem to change their opinions or change their heart. When it's my turn to succeed, I will be what my community loves. I will be what my community looks up to. I will be the example of a gorgeous black young woman. I am me. I am that black girl. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys liked it. To my nieces and nephews of Mrs. Honest Agosti's class at Morris Jeff Community School, I just want to say I am so proud of you. You know, your Black History Month Poetry Slam was just awesome. Each and every one of you used your voices in ways that moved my heart and connected me to you in more ways than you can even imagine. I'm so proud. Now, you asked me to be a judge, which was the hardest thing that you could ever ask me, simply because each and every one of you were on target, you were creative, your voice is elevated, they matter, and I love you. So I just want to encourage you to continue to use your voice. The issues that you brought forth throughout your poetry or within your poetry resonated and truly um, speaks to the issues that not only you as young people are faced with, but just in our community. So, but using your voice, understanding that there's power in that and speaking truth to power will not only open doors up for you, but for your peers, for your families, and really for the community as a whole. So continue to do that. And I'm here not only to listen, but also to work with you to address the issues in our community so that we all can live a better life and have a better quality of life that we deserve. So I love you, keep it coming, and always, always know that your TD is here for you. Thank you. Hey, you guys. First, and foremost, congratulations, congratulations on your effort, on your participation, on your bravery and your courage to record and to present. And so that of course is the very first step. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to these poems, to this poetry and to being a judge again for this year's Morris Jeff Poetry Slam. I wanna encourage you all to really take it in. I said this last year, but I'll, I'll continue to say it. Really take that time to know and to own your pieces, right? So one of the most important things when you are delivering is to have it memorized because when you have it memorized, you can deliver it, right? So that's my biggest piece of feedback because there were a lot of readers, right? But when we deliver, Poetry, we deliver it because we're delivering a very strong message with very impactful words. So congratulations again on your participation. Keep, you know, applying yourselves and, and being passionate about what matters in our community. And, you know, do your best. Hi everyone, this is Eric June. Uh, first, I wanna thank Teresa for allowing me to be on the panel for the second time. I uh, really appreciate you for that. And to all the kids that participated, I wanna say you did a magnificent job and it took a lot of courage to do what you did and I'm proud of you all. Um, I have a little advice for all of you who participated. A um, few things I wanna let y'all hear before I leave. Uh, one, the past cannot be changed. Two, having faith in God, even when 
you're in doubt. Uh, three, never forget to find happiness within self. Four, appreciate what you have. Five, hard work and dedication always pays off. Six, never stop believing in self. And seven, be the change you want to see in the world. Peace, everybody. Much success to you in your future. And may God bless you all. Thanks. All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of the show. So um, I want to say again, congratulations to all of the participants. That being said, we do need to announce our winners. So let's talk real quick so everybody understands how the artwork was judged. So each poem was rated in four categories. The first one was knowing the poem. This speaks a little bit to what our judge Heather was saying. You know, were you completely reading the whole thing? Did some of it come from memory? Um, that was uh, the first criteria. Second was speaking clearly. This is always a big thing on stage, but even still in the virtual world where it can be easy to kind of regress into silence because you're thinking it's just you and the computer. So how well can we hear them? Uh, uh, clearly, and then voice volume, that kind of ties in with it as well. And then the fourth one was acting and dialogue. We really tried to stress to the kids that the difference between just a poem and a poetry slam is the theatrics that go along with it. So um, I, I believe that a lot of them, they really hit that. Even, even some of our friends who are a little afraid to speak out, um, out loud with their um, video on, you could still hear it in their voice, which I thought was exciting. So that brings us to our awards. So our third place winner of our third annual Black History Month Poetry Slam was Cameron Bro in eighth grade with I Am Me. Congratulations, Cameron. Our second place winner this year was William Julian in sixth grade with his title, a poem titled Dr. Martin Luther. And if I could get everybody at home to help with a drum roll. First place winner, this year's Poetry Slam goes to Amari Lewis in seventh grade with his poem, Life as a Black Man. So congratulations to every single one of you. Um, I do have to point out, I wanna share with you guys, the second that this was announced, Amari came to me and he was like, I'm winning this year, Miss A. I am winning this year. Cause he didn't win last year and he tried his best and he came back with that resilience that we love to see in our kids and he took it. So I am so proud of him. I am proud of everybody. For all of our winners, both in the poetry and art contests, I want to let you know, keep an eye out for either myself or Mrs. Herbert to deliver your prizes next week. Now, um, I would like to take a moment um, just for a few closing thoughts before we officially part ways. So first, another huge thank you and congratulations goes out to our brave young poets and artists. Thank you for such a bright, shining light and an otherwise dim time of life right now. We're all trying our best, but you really, you shone bright, right today. We have truly, you've truly brought so much joy to us all. For our judges, another heartfelt thank you goes out for participating and supporting our kids. Representation matters, and each of you are amazing examples of hard work, dedication, and the type of success we hope for all of our Morris Jeff scholars. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For everyone here, thank you so much for tuning into this event. I hope, even though I have no doubt that you took as much joy in this as I did, your support means the world. And lastly, on a personal note, I wanna talk about what this event truly represents in the most difficult of years, both educationally and personally for many of us, 
I challenge you to see this year's Poetry Slam for what it was, a lesson taught to us by our kids. These young kings and queens are so ridiculously resilient. Just like us, they are tired, stressed, over it. But look at what they gave us. They gave us hope, passion, joy, a belief that everything will be okay and we will get past this. Our kids are so powerful and yes, their voices do matter. And I'm so grateful for this reminder of better things to come. So this ends the official Poetry Slam portion of our event. Um, I am going to play the art show. Uh, it's about 10 minutes long. You do not have to stick around. It is. It will be uploaded to um, Morris Jeff's social media, but I do want to play it in case anybody wants to stick around and watch it here. Otherwise, thank you all again, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. So here goes our art show. Good afternoon, Morris Jeff Middle School. It is time for our art show that is going along with our third annual Morris Jeff Community School Black History Month Poetry Slam. As a reminder, the theme this year was Our Voice Matters, A Moment in History. In just a moment, you're gonna see a bunch of artwork that is from your peers. They all submitted work uh, based on the theme, Our Voice Matters, A Moment in History. And then the artwork was judged and we will be presenting the winners at the end of this show. So please sit back and enjoy the artwork from your classmates. First, we have this piece titled Love from Alexandra B in sixth grade. She says, this is artwork represents love for black people. Then we have this artwork titled One Love by Elias in sixth grade. He says, One Love is an artwork that is telling the world how important Black people are and everyone is. Also, how racism is a sign of no peace. So I used African tribal clothes with the heads of African American heroes. Heads of African American heroes show how African Americans act as a constellation leading and currently shaping American history as stars, like MLK, Rosa Parks, Barack Obama, and Kamala Harris. I draw Africans are holding hands as a sign of peace and happiness. And I used African clothes to represent the free African history and that slavery should not exist. The stars to remember those who died from slavery or police brutality and embrace every colored person leading and shining as its own star. The story of African-Americans symbolizes the struggle of many races and ethnicities around the world. African Americans deserve peace and every other race and all that and that all of our voices matter. Next we have up This is Real from Ava Atkins in seventh grade. I created a collage of pictures from different Black Lives Matter protests with a fist in the middle. Our next work is untitled. Uh, we don't have a statement, but it is from Nico in eighth grade. This piece is titled Voices Matter, and it is from Ariel in sixth grade. This piece titled People of Color Empowerment is from Faith in eighth grade. Faith says, I made a drawing of a black girl to spread awareness that no matter race, color, background, or sexuality, you are amazing just the way you are. I made this piece by using Ahu alcohol markers and black fine liners. This piece, which is untitled, is from Ella in eighth grade. Ella says, I made this because I know we learn a lot about history. 
another untitled piece. It is from Elijah G in eighth grade. Elijah says, Black Lives Matter. This piece from DeAndre in eighth grade is also untitled. And he says it's a drawing of the Black Lives Matter symbol. This piece titled Black History Picture is from Jalen in eighth grade. Jalen says, I made a drawing using pencils and markers. I used this drawing to talk about Black History Month. Why I picked this was because I felt like Black history was a good topic to talk about. This piece from Renata in eighth grade is also untitled. This piece titled Progress is from Dea in sixth grade. She says, I made a drawing of black women using markers to bring awareness to women of color being discriminated against. This piece is untitled and it's from Bobby in eighth grade. On the picture it says, we do not steal from one another. We do not kill one another. We educate our own at every chance. We do not fight one another. Brothers protect and build up one another. These are the Black, Party, Pan Black Panther Party rules. And it also says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, quoted by MLK. This artwork from Oscar in eighth grade is untitled. If you look up close to it, it says, why must we destroy our own world and leave a mess for our descendants to clean up? Please see it in your heart, the potential you can unleash. We are all people and we're different. This is a piece by Zania in eighth grade. And she says, I drew faces to represent different people fighting to prove that they are human and they are the same. This untitled piece is from Magda in seventh grade. She says, I made a drawing of George Floyd using markers in order to raise awareness of the topic that Black Lives Matter. This piece is from Zyla in eighth grade and it is untitled. If you want to see the words that are included in this artwork, you can pull up these slides that will be posted to your advisory and look through these on your own. And our final piece is another untitled piece from Cameron in seventh grade. So congratulations goes out to all of our young artists. Thank you for sharing your voices with us through your different art forms. Here we have a quote that says, the one thing that you have that nobody else has is you, your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. This is from author Neil Gaiman. Each of you who participated in this Poetry Slam art contest showed us that you are you. You showed us your voice and what you have in your mind. And we appreciate you being brave enough and being risk takers to share that with us. So each of you should feel especially proud that you took this opportunity to share your voice with us. That being said, we do have a contest to judge and to announce the winners. So how was this work judged? We had four different criteria. First, we were looking that it clearly represented the theme. So did these artworks hit that idea of our voice matters, a moment in history? Then we were looking at creativity. Does it look unique that it's not copied as if somebody didn't go on the internet and copy an image, right? This is from their own mind and their own heart. Does the artwork look complete? Does it look like they spent all the time in the world and really finished that? Or does it look like maybe it could use a little bit more time? And then the last thing it was graded on is, is it neat? Does it look like high quality, like it took them some time and it's nice and neat or is it kind of sloppy? So each of these categories was graded on a scale of one to five, which gave each student a total score out of 20. The voting was blind. What that means is that the judges did not know the names of the artists when they looked at the artwork. 
This was to prevent any sort of bias or anybody saying, well, that's a favorite student. That's blah, blah, blah. No, we wanted to make sure that everybody had the same playing field and no judge knew who the artists were. So who were our judges for the artwork? It was your teachers. So the teachers took a look at all this artwork they rated and all of the averages came together to give us our third, second and first place winners. So drum roll, please. Our third place winner for this year's art contest is Faith with the piece titled People of Color Empowerment. Congratulations, Faith in eighth grade. Our second place winner was Magda in seventh grade with her untitled piece that says up in the artwork, don't give up the fight. Congratulations, Magda. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's get it up for our first place winner, Mr. Elias Ahmed in sixth grade with his piece titled One Love. Everybody give a nice round of applause for Elias and all of our contestants for being risk takers, sharing their voice with us, sharing their beautiful artwork, and congratulations to everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the art show. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Have a wonderful and safe weekend. Bye, y'all.